All right, so in recent days, I've made a, a you know a couple of videos that were you know about an hour long, and I didn't publish them, and I answered some comments in those videos, and um, so in essence, because I didn't publish them, I didn't uh, address those comments. So I want to do that now. I'm going to start with the very first one, Scott Merrow. He's got a comment here, basically, um, to summarize. He's he's saying, hey, uh, you know what? We used to have two suns, and the moon is a burned-out sun, and uh, the sun that we have now is going to burn out. And... Uh, so I want to just try to be brief about this, if that's possible. So we can go to Genesis 1. And read about there's two lights that God creates. All right, if I can find it. And right there it is. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So right here is a clear reference that God made a sun and he made a moon. And it's very interesting that three days and three nights before, there was no sun. There was no moon think about that you got day and night but you got no sun you got no moon now this is in the very beginning so before there was a sun and a moon there was no sun and no moon you get what I'm saying so the there was never any time when there was two suns. All right. Now, you either believe the Bible or you don't. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. You either believe God or you don't. All right. And there's one interesting verse here I want to share. Um in Isaiah 29 verse 16 surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay for shall the work say of him that made it he made me not or shall the thing framed save a uh, him that framed it he had no understanding so are you saying that God didn't understand how he made the heavens and the earth really isn't that what it comes down to all right in Psalm 89 it shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven now let's go look at the word Sun in the book of Revelation in the resurrection in the world to come after our Lord Jesus Christ comes and the new city, the city of God, comes down out of heaven. And uh, we are back on a new earth with uh, new heavens. And here in Revelation 21, it says, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb of, is the light thereof. So just as we read in Psalm 89, we also read in 21, Revelation 21 that there is a sun and a moon. In Revelation 22, there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Now, Right there it says they have no need. They need no light. They need no candle. 
um, they need no light of the sun implies that there is a sun and there is sunlight but they don't need it we don't need it we don't need the light of the sun we don't need the the moon for light at night doesn't mean it doesn't say it's going away that there's it's going to burn out no reference at all to this idea that it's going to burn out and um let's see if i can find i wonder if uh scott mentions this verse here yeah he does very first verse okay i want someone to explain isaiah 30 verse 26 so let's right there it is let's explain it moreover the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days as the light of seven days yeah and the day that the Lord binds up the breach of his people and heals the stroke of their wound all right now this parallels let's open this up this parallels Matthew 24 verse 29 um, Right there it is, okay. Now, uh, if we could here, let's see. And there shall be upon every mount, every high mountain, and upon every hill, rivers, and streams, and waters, in the day of the great slaughter, when the towers fall, behold, the name of the Lord comes far from far, burning with his anger, and the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of ing ing indignation, and his tongue as a devouring fire now this is a sort of a quick prophecy uh, indication of the coming judgment and the end of the world all right and um, so we go to Matthew 24 and we see a parallel When it says the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Now, this is the end of the world. All right, and so let's go back to Revelation. And I want to show you something here. And here's another parallel with Matthew 24, 29. And the sun became black as, saf, as sack cloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. It's parallel. And all you have to do is connect the dots. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. And a third part of the sun was smitten. All right, hold on to your horse now. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Okay, hold on. And his face was as it were the sun. By the woman clothed with the sun. Revelation 16. Now, it's important to understand. Revelation 16 is the pouring out of the vials of the wrath of God alright so the fourth angel pouring out his vial which is the wrath of God and this vial that's being poured out upon the sun and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire this is directly parallel with what we're reading here in Isaiah 30 verse 26 moreover the light of the moon shall be as the light of the Sun and the light of the Sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and heals the stroke of their wound this is uh, directly related to those of us that are 
changed in the twinkling of an eye. When God heals us and makes us whole. And um, again, behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar, burning with his anger, and the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation, and his tongue as a devouring fire. All right, this is speaking of the wrath of God that he's going to pour upon the earth. So, if you want to think of it in sequence, you've got the Lord coming in the air, in the clouds, right? And then those of us that are born of God are changed in the twinkling of an eye, and first the dead in Christ and those of us which are alive and remain shall be lifted up together to meet the Lord in the air and then so when we're up in the air our enemy is gathered at our feet and fire comes down from God which um, symbolizes if you will that destruction or the end of the of all wickedness forever now part of this wrath that is being poured out and it's given in detail in Revelation 16 so that we might understand what is coming on the earth for those that are not saved and part of this wrath of God in Revelation 16 the uh, one of the wraths or one of the vials of the wrath of God that's being poured out upon the earth is this fourth angel pouring out his vial upon the sun and then that sun is going to scourge men with fire and great heat now um, I mean that's it right there so if we can understand the sun all that all that stuff will be darkened but then um, when all this uh, when the sun is darkened and the moon should not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken this is going to be a red alert moment that the Lord is coming we're gonna see the Lord coming we're gonna be lifted up and then the wrath of God is going to be poured upon the earth all right and when it's all done it's, there's gonna be a new heaven and a new earth all right so I hope that uh, uh, sort of explains uh, Isaiah 30 verse 26 you can obviously draw a direct parallel to um, Revelation 16 8 and, um, and there's no other way to view that no other way All right, so how many lies does earth have uh, what is this here all right invading their domes you know this is a great comment here after Matthew 24 29 at the end of the world there will be no above ground surviving the cold that will come when our remaining son dies okay so that's not in the Bible but what is in the Bible is um, you know they're gonna be hiding in the rocks And um, right here in Revelation 6, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. It's not because of the cold. It's because of the wrath that is coming. We also read a similar passage in Luke 21, where it says, men's hearts will be failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heaven shall be shaken so uh, when it's the end of the world unsaved people are gonna know it's over for them they're not gonna repent they're not gonna say oh I believe I believe no, they never believe, they will, still won't believe, and they'll die in their unbelief. And as we see here in Revelation 6, they'll try to hide, and they won't be able to hide. Okay. 
and we, uh, you know, nobody knows uh, what the, exactly uh, the city of God will look like when it comes down from heaven. Of course, I'll, you know, I'll contend that the dimensions are consistent with a pyramid, and I know some people say a cube. Not a big deal. <laughs> the whole book Earth used to have two suns and they don't want us figuring it out and invading their dumbs look when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven what's he say go hide in one of these uh, dumb what a dumb something I don't know what it means I don't know what dumb I'm too dumb to know what dumb means I really am but what what does Jesus say when he's coming in the clouds of heaven? He says, when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. He says, look up and lift up your heads. He doesn't say go and hide. Find out where their, figure out where their dumbs are. No. They don't want us figuring out invading their dumbs. <laughs> it's not going to do them any good. It's not going to do you any good. All right. So I appreciate that comment. Uh, there's a lot there, and uh, and then again, CERN. All CERN is is a giant ring of wires, and they send electricity through these wires and cause it the electricity to crash upon itself and then they capture images of this collision that's all there's no useful thing that they're getting from it at all nothing useful about it it's a fun project but it's not doing anybody any good it's completely vain and it's an attempt to find technology undiscovered um, but they're not gonna find any use out of they haven't found any use of it whatsoever at all and this thing's been going on for a long time they still ain't figured out nothing and I'm sure a lot of money goes into it but it's worthless all right and I, I get it people want to make a big deal out of something it's interesting you know people think stuff like that's interesting okay but it's vanity right and the reason I'm so stupid is because I'm dumb the reason you're dumb is because you're stupid no I'm just kidding okay so thanks for that Roderick appreciate that and uh, so I did cover Frank's question and I you know I, I went back and I looked at um, Isaiah 65 verse 20 and I gave an explanation I don't remember it but I got to thinking about you know what I had said and I thought you know I'm not satisfied with that a more simpler way to look at this verse would be to say a child that dies in a hundred years old um, you that are born of God are a child of God all right the sinner is a person that is not born of the Spirit of God all right so that's a better way in my opinion to look at that verse um, the one thing is clear is that in the resurrection all right once we're resurrected there is no more dying there is no more death this mortal body will put on immortality we shall never die once we are changed in the twinkling of an eye we will there will be no more death all right when our enemy is destroyed this is the same time when we are changed our enemy will be destroyed forever they will die and die the second death and 
death will be swallowed up in victory. There will be no more death. So you cannot use this verse to say that people will be dying after Jesus comes and makes all things new. All right, in the world to come, there will be no more death. All right. Yeah, so I appreciate that comment, Franklin. And there's that excellent uh, comment from John D. Stem. Why are you so stupid? That's a great question. I don't know. Just don't know. Why am I so doggone stupid? All right, thanks, Richie. Yeah. And there was a comment here, a question about Revelation 11 and 13. I thought it was this week. Did I miss it? Hold on a sec. No. Alright, it was from... Maybe it was last week, huh? Okay. <laughs> oh. That's who it was from. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Where's it at? Oh no. I forget. I Well, it was something. Did he remove that question? Alright, so. Alright. So am I crazy here? I can't reconcile that scripture or any other scripture that pertains to the thousand year reign, millennium reign. Um, am I not addressing that? I mean, I thought I've been doing that every single day. Well, let's take a look at it. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. They were souls beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the Word of God and had not worshipped the beast. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. No matter what, you cannot say this is Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years. No matter what, no matter how you perceive this, you cannot say Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years. It's not there. I mean, it's as plain as day, number one, and number two, Jesus reigns forever. He doesn't reign a thousand years. The Bible's very clear about that. So, our friend, Mike Moore, says, I can't reconcile this. I don't know how a person can reconcile this idea of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years 
with what we actually read in Revelation 20 verse 4. It, because, the, I mean, right there, it does not say Jesus reigns a thousand years. It says we live and reign with Christ a thousand years. And it's clearly speaking of this time frame when we are witnesses for God and of Christ, right? We are priests of God and of Christ. And the second death has no power over us when those of us that are born of the Spirit of God. We shall never die. That's what Jesus says. He that... I am the bread of life, and he that, what, I, what's that verse? How come I can't remember that? I am the bread of life. He's the manna from heaven, right? Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believes on me shall never thirst. Jesus says, I am that bread of life life I am the living bread which came down from heaven if any man eat of this bread he shall live forever the second death has no power over us that are born of God right now right now we are called to preach the gospel to every creature we are a royal priesthood right now there's no way at all to make any legitimate argument that there is a thousand year reign of Christ you have a Bible I'm showing you the Bible I'm going over the Bible with you you have a Bible of your own you could see it for yourself and yet people are blind people are blind and I I honestly believe it's because they don't believe the Bible they hold in their hands. Even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away when they believe in God. When they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ then the veil is taken away right and I I firmly believe because people lack faith they are not able to see what Revelation 20 verse 4 actually says even though it's right there in front of their face they can't see it because the veil is upon their heart therefore they are trusting what other people are teaching about Revelation 20 all right they're not trusting the Word of God they're trusting the words of men even as it is right in front of them and there's a, a verse uh, here uh, in John 8 uh, very interesting uh, Jesus said unto them if God were your father you would love me for I proceeded forth and came from God neither came I of myself but he sent me why do ye not understand my speech even because you cannot hear my word he's standing right there in front of them and he's telling them the absolute truth very plain very simply and very easy for anybody to understand but they don't understand why because the veil is upon their heart because they do not believe and because I tell you the truth you believe me not and so we have the absolute simple truth here in uh, Revelation 20 but people can't see it because they don't trust what they read they're putting their trust in the words of men all right it's it's crazy I get it but that I think that's the way it has to be this is the way it has to be until the end of the world and we read in 
I think it's. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, no, no, I don't know where it's at. Here, let me find it real quick. Oh, I was, I was off. Okay, whatever. Okay, so Luke chapter eighteen. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on earth? Right? This is an indication that things are going to get worse and worse until the very end. And then when the end comes, it's over. Alright? Why else would you ask this question? if things were not getting worse and worse. And we got example after example. Uh, you know, when Noah was saved, there was only eight people saved, right? We see in, in the city of Sodom, there was not even 10 righteous, all right? And so again, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes in the air, will he find faith on earth? Meaning there's not gonna be very many people that believe and that's why we're seeing so many people not able to see the plain Word of God that they have in their hands they're trusting what other people say and they're not trusting the Word of God all right and, and as I said here I wanted to I wanted to uh, I, I, I could have sworn there was a comment here, a question about Revelation 11 and 13. Uh, and I don't remember exactly what he was wanting me to go over here. Revelation 11 to oh the 42 months okay so this is in reference to the seven years okay I got it I got you all right so 42 months is is a half of seven years right but it's not seven years all right Revelation 13 I know people make a big deal out of it right 42 months all right it would have to be 84 months for it to be seven years all right, there's no mention at all of seven years. All right, there's no mention at all. And I thought I went over that in the video. There's no mention at all anywhere in the Bible of a seven year tribulation period. It's not any, we could go over all 99 of those mentions. All right, and you'll see here, um, no mention of a seven year tribulation. No mention here of a seven year tribulation. No mention here of a seven year tribulation. It's not in the Bible. All right. And again, people are trusting what others are teaching and not trusting what the Word of God says. Okay, that's it.